our large black old spot cross boots failed the pharaoh, we picked up these two piglets from Down Home Farm. We kept boots contained in a paddock with just a single poly wire hooked up to an electric charger you can see here. After we processed boots, we left the piglets in that enclosure and they moved freely in and out underneath that electric wire. And though it's cute to have piglets free ranging around the farm, and Lola certainly had a lot of fun with them, there comes a point when the cuteness wears out and the piglets start doing damage. Getting into the compost here. And it's also not safe to have them wandering around. They like to go down to visit the cows. And aside from that threat, there are also predators around, so having a better enclosure for them is important. So we put up a poly net and some stepping posts and made a secure pen for them for the winter. But when spring came, they started pushing mud against it and shorting it out and sneaking out. It's much harder to herd larger pigs than it is piglets, as Lola can attest, and they started getting out on a regular basis. This is when we decided that we should go ahead and build a hard-sided pig pen for them. So we went down to Tractor Supply and we picked up some hog panels, a four-foot gate, and some T-posts. Fortunately, I didn't have to spend the $30 each for a six inch treated post because I already had these lying around. We'll employ the Pythagorean theorem to square our back corner here. So I've set these two stakes in the plane that I want the back side to be, and then we're going to square off of that. So these are set and they are exactly 72 inches from the inside of this stake to the face we can see of that stake. I've tied baling twine onto them so that I can hook my measuring tape to that since I'm out here alone today. And so Pythagorean theorem tells us that if we want to have a 90 degree angle in this corner of a triangle, then we need side A, which will be this, squared, plus side B, which will be the other direction, squared, will equal the square of the diagonal, the hypotenuse, that will go between that third stake and that stake. So. The easy ratio to remember is three, four, five. So three times three is nine, four times four is 16. Add those up is 25, square root of that is five. So three, four, five. So in this case, I've doubled those numbers. We have six feet or 72 inches between these two, which means we'll need this run to be eight feet and the hypotenuse to be 10 feet. So that will, the, where those two links meet, will be the exact placement of that. Then we'll have a square corner, and we can measure everything off of uh, these sides in parallel. So the other side there will run parallel to this, and the far side over there will run parallel to this line here. Then we'll have a nice square pig pen, and it won't be visually disturbing and all of our panels will be long enough and won't come up short and that sort of thing. So base do a little bit of surveying before we start putting things in the dirt. With these three stakes in the ground, I'm able to pull my measuring tape in line with them and mark the corner at 16 feet and then the other corner at 31 feet so that I've got an overlap halfway, which is where this flag goes. And I thought it'd be cute and sharpen off these stakes and push them into the ground with the loader on the tractor, but it wouldn't start. So, of course, back to the manual post hole diggers. And so inside of each of these flags, I dug a two foot deep hole. And once I had that cleared out, I plumbed up these posts and tamped the dirt in with a flat bar. Got everything 
nice and straight up and down. And with all seven posts in, it was time to attach the hog panels using these barbed fence staples. Anchor them in four locations with three staples at the top, three at the bottom, and two in the interim sections. It's important to provide a little bit of back support on these freshly tamped in posts so they don't wiggle too much. Over time they'll settle. There you can see all the staples in this corner. And once all those panels were up to the posts, I can come in with the T-post, get the panel in line between the two corner posts, and use the post driver to tap those in, and my foot to secure the spade on these T-posts so it doesn't twist, and drove these down to the point where the spade was under the ground. Now I'm using this light gauge aluminum wire to secure the panels to the posts, a slightly heavier gauge would be good here, but the same principle applies. About four wraps on each side, just to hold this panel snug to the T-post. And I do this in three locations on each post. That should hold for these pegs. I can always replace these if they fail down the road, but this works for now, and I had it. To hang this gate, I took these hinge posts and set them about three inches up off the ground and when you do this you want to uh, mark the locations in height and then plumb the center of where you're going to bore the pilot hole so that the gate will stay where you put it and won't swing in or out. Using this crescent wrench I was able to thread these posts into the corner treated post and you'll notice that I set this bottom hinge pin down so that rooting pigs couldn't lift the gate off of its hinges. This hog panel I cut down to leave the opening for the gate and then I later used the cutoff section and wired it to the gate so that it would also be piglet proof down the road. The pigs are not particularly happy, but they're safe and this will be a good home for them. Are you mad? Over the spring and summer, these pigs will root out all the roots of these red willow plants, which will keep them from attacking my garden. And in the fall, they'll be ready to process.